All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about scope basics. DSO, digital storage oscilloscopes. What are they? What are they good for? And basic introduction. So a scope is basically voltage over time graphed. So you can see what's going on. Now, I'm sure every technician has a DVOM. Pretty standard kit for most technicians, digital volt ohm meter. The difference between a DVOM and a scope is several factors. For instance, the sampling rate, how often it actually looks at the signal. A scope has a much faster sample rate. When it sees what's going on, a DVOM has a very slow response time. If you've ever used a DVOM that is auto ranging, you know sometimes there's a little bit of a time difference between when something happens and when it responds. That's the sampling rate. Now, a little bit of history. Back in the day, if you're my age, you remember the big box scopes. Those were oscilloscopes, but they were not storage. They didn't have digital storage. They were just scopes. And if you're old enough to remember them, you probably don't need to watch this video. But what they did is very similar to what current scopes do. They just do it with a much lower resolution screen, slower sample rate, and they were big, bulky, and kind of temperamental. But almost every shop had one. Oddly enough, I don't know why every shop doesn't have a scope in the, in the shop. They should have. If you remember back in the day after Snap-on put out some very nice scopes like the Consular 2, they brought out something called the Vantage. Now the Vantage is not a scope. It is a graphing multimeter. A lot of guys love those tools and they were good for what they did. I mean, they allowed you to see the voltage over time, just not as high of a sampling rate as a scope, but it was a good introduction to the idea of a scope. Now, those are long since dead. A lot of guys love them and will keep them alive buying spare ones on eBay for spare parts, screens, everything. I mean, they, the guys that love them are almost a cult. Now, after that, they came out with the Vantage Pro, which actually is a scope. Now, the sampling rate on that is much better than the original Vantage, hence it being a scope. Only two channel. The Vantage Pro was great for its time. Limitations are interface, screen, and if that, around that same time, they brought out the Modus. Now, the Modus is what I cut my real scoping teeth on. It was a good scope for the time, but you know, Snap-on has limitations. And we'll get into that in future videos, but Snap-on's limitations are based on sampling rate and how they capture the signal. One of the biggest drawbacks of a Snap-on scope is actually, if you're not right on it, all you can do is zoom out. You can't zoom into a capture. So if you didn't get enough detail in a capture on a glitch, you're kind of messed up. There's options nowadays. There's tons of options. You've got the ATS scope. You've got, of course, Pico. You still have Snap-on. Now, Snap-on, if you've got a Snap-on scope, it will do most everything you need to do in the, in the field in an automotive repair shop. It has its limitations, especially on can networks where it doesn't exactly do as great of a job as it could. Kind of a nitpicky thing of that tool. A scope. Now I've driven on here two waveforms, basically a Hall effect sensor, real simple signal. Now you're diagnosing a car, you've got two cam sensors. You've got a cam sensor code and you want to look for things like sync and that kind of stuff, or you want to look for like this, where the signal just drops out. Again, voltage over time. Now I did a simple waveform. 
we'll get into a little more about actually comparing waveforms later on, but it's important to understand what a waveform looks like. Simple waveform, on-off circuit, nothing real special about it. But again, you see it flatline, and then you might see it come back. Well, the computer is going to see that a DVOM is not. And that kind of signal, you need a simple scope, test leads, back pinning probes, or piercing probes. Nothing real fancy about it. There's other tests where we're going to get into where you require special adapters. But simple waveform. Setting up the scope is one of the things that Snap-on really does excel at. They have a whole section of their, all of their tools to help you set up the tool. They will set up the graph for you with all the parameters, the voltage setting, the time setting, or as they call it, sweep, to give you the advantage along with pinouts. They will give you directions on how to hook up. Great for a beginning technician. Now, I will tell you, a great tool to learn on is the Vantage Pro. You can find them nowadays on eBay for $500 to $800, get you into the use of a scope, give you those helping hands to kind of guide you through if you don't have a guy like me in the shop to help you figure it out. Now, simple tests you can do just like this with just those leads. Now, more advanced testing, you're gonna need some, some tools. Now, if you want to do a cranking compression test where you use a high amp or low amp clamp to see if the uh, engine is cranking over evenly, you're going to need a high amp or a low amp clamp. Low amp clamp, high amp clamp. One of the advantages of the Pico is the option of a high amp clamp easily adaptable to the tool. The snap-on kind of got to buy either the low amp clamp and kind of backdoor it, either with a low amp clamp and go to the voltage settings instead of the preset clamp settings for a low amp clamp to do a cranking compression. You can do it, but it's a little more backdoor instead of right up front. Those are getting a little more advanced. Now, it's not a hard test to do, but it's a little more advanced. I'm going to pop up a little picture of it behind me so you can see what a cranking compression test is. Basically all we're looking for is even. Now if we're not even then we need to sync to a source. Now generally when I do a cranking compression I'm already kind of suspecting compression issues so I'll sync it to a cylinder. Now, I was doing a known good so I wasn't worried about it but you can either use a always want to use spark simply because it lines with the compression stroke. So you can figure out firing order, figure out what cylinder is bad. And you, all you gotta do is put in your firing order from what cylinder you sync to. And it doesn't matter, by the way, what cylinder you sync to, all you gotta do is go, this is, none, this is lines up with, you know, cylinder number four, this is, you know, five, seven, two, whatever. All you gotta do is lay out the firing order and you can figure out what cylinders are not contributing. You know, really, good test to shortcut base engine problems. Now, obviously after that point, you need to go into further diagnosis, you know, compression test, leak down test, all that kind of stuff. But it's a good shortcut to go, oh, well, tune-up's not gonna fix this car, I need to do something else. A cranking compression test is a great first step with a drivability complaint. You know instantly that the cylinders are all contributing equally. Now. Equally can be a misnomer. If you've got an engine that all cylinders are low compression, well, cranking compression is not going to give you a good idea of that, but it will find uneven compression. One of the biggest, best things for a scope is cam crank correlation. Now, when you're getting into scoping and you've got a vehicle with a drivability problem, and you suspect it's out of time, which is becoming more and more common nowadays with timing chains. You know, it's not exactly easy to pop the covers off and look at the timing belt and see it's off. It's a lot harder. So with cam cranks correlation, you can take a known good. Now we're gonna get in the known good part in a little bit, 
but you can compare what you took off the vehicle and go, it's off. I know I've got a known good signal on this picture. I know I've got a known bad picture on this one. It's off. It, you know at that point it's time to do a teardown and probably, you know, put a time and chains, actuators, or whatever you need into it. But it's a great way to instantly know we've got a problem one of the biggest benefits of a timing, you know, let's just say you've got a customer that they're kind of questionable about how much they're going to spend on that car. Do you want to invest in taking off valve covers, intakes, you know, lining up cam marks, crank marks, and oh, yeah, we're not paying for that. With, whereas with a cam crank correlation, you've got 20 minutes in a finding a known good and comparing it and you're done they know they've got a timing issue they're not willing to spend the money on it you get your hour you're done whereas if you tore down you might have hour and a half two hours into it depending on the engine might have 20 minutes into it depends on the engine so that's one of the advantages of using a scope in a day-to-day -day shop a lot of guys go ah you know i don't need a scope there's really important times when you need a scope now the last one we're going to talk about is network diagnosis. If you've dealt with modern vehicles, you've probably dealt with something pulling down a network. You know, the CAN signal flatlining, something like that. And again, I'll pop up a, a known good capture. It's important to understand that, you know, in diagnosing those vehicles, especially CAN networks, you really need to look at the signal. You need to figure out what's going on with that signal. Once you understand the network topography, how it's situated in the network, you can figure out exactly what module is the problem a lot faster than if you don't. This is something I have struggled with for a long time. Being in a high production shop, you know, going from the Modus to the Ultra, losing a laptop, I've lost a lot of known goods over the years but there's resources out there. You've got Pico themselves. You've got IETN. You've got Facebook groups. Network, network with fellow technicians. Find out if they've got a known good on the vehicle you're working on. You know, have them email it over. If it's a Pico scope capture, which by the way, if you wanna play with Pico scope software, it is free to download. They've got a demo mode. So if you go on IATN and somebody has uploaded a Pico file, raw file, you can pull that into your software and play with it and look at it and see how, it, how the Pico software works, allowing you to actually manipulate it. So let's say you're using a Snap-on and you need to manipulate it so it looks close in the same time basis of what you're dealing with on the Snap-on, you can pull it, correct the time base so it's very similar to what you're looking at. So, I hope you like this introduction to DSO scopes. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to see the rest of this series on using scopes. We will be hooking up and scoping vehicles and helping you guys hopefully learn about scopes. So I hope you like this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching and I am the flat rate master.